Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today to finish out a week. I hope it's been a good week for you. I mean, the weather's getting nice, so it really ought to have been a good week. I have a passage to share today that I think I think is helpful for folks to understand. Now, not implying that everybody already doesn't understand it, because many do, I think, but maybe it'll be it'll be interesting for you. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I'll read, do something different here. I'm going to read a verse later in the chapter, then go back and read the a verse earlier. So let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 21, and then verse 1. Here's how it goes. For Christ, God made Christ, who never sinned, to be offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. And then, verse 1, For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, <clears throat> that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body, made for us by God himself, and not by human hands. So it starts out, the reason I read it backwards, is because it starts out, <coughs> excuse me, and it tells us what Jesus did. Now, as I said in the beginning, many of you already understand this. But let's take a really good look at it. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be an offering for our sin. So that we could be made right with God. So this passage is telling us that a person who never did wrong took the penalty in place of all of us who did wrong. Now, you catch that? The person of Jesus <clears throat> never did anything wrong against God. He never sinned in any way, shape, or form. But he became the offering for our sin. We didn't do anything to earn it. He did it. It says, so that. It's important sometimes to look at scripture when it says, so that, or because of. And what is that related to? So that we, you and me, could be made right with God. Somehow, being made right with God must be really important. Or God wouldn't have sacrificed Jesus in our place. So why is it important? Well, for several reasons. But one of them ex is expressed in the first verse. We know that the heavenly tent we live in is going to die. It's in. We're going to die. Well, if you haven't figured that one out yet, <laughs> I don't know where you've been. Maybe you're too young to think about it. But we all die. And the closer we get to it, the more we sometimes think about it. And, and you would think that getting closer to it would drive the person to find a solution or to do whatever needed to be done before that happens. It, it, research shows that doesn't happen. People don't get more religious just because they get older. Sometimes they get even less religious, maybe in defiance to the fact that this body of ours breaks down. And <laughs> there are only so many things we can do to keep it running. So it says here that when we die, when we leave this earthly body, we will have, 
meaning there's an alternative. There's a substitute. There's a replacement. There's something yet to come. When this body dies, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself. See, God wants you and me to live a life that's full of his goodness and his joy and his happiness and to do it right now. But we can't do that forever in this body. We gotta get something else. And so God makes for a replacement. Look at it this way. You go out and you buy a brand new car. And it's a wonderful car. It's got all kinds of things that work in really neat ways. It takes you everywhere you need to go. It, it, it's shiny so you can show it off and, and you can tell people how great it is. But over time, it gets a little less so. And finally, it reaches a point where you just have to let it go. It's dead. And look at all these cars in places along the highways where people just piled them up. At one time, they were a shiny, brand new car, exciting people to own. But now they're just junk. Well, that's how this body is. But that isn't the end of the story. God doesn't want the story to end when we turn into junk. <laughs> but in order to get to the new body, which is in heaven where he is, and there can be no sin in God's immediate presence like heaven, there had to be a way to take away yours and my sin. There has to be a way to resurrect that junk car. And the way is Jesus offering himself for us. Now, if you think about it, that's a pretty good deal. And it says that there's nothing we do about it. We just accept it and, and, and be thankful and live our lives in occasion with that wonderful act that God did. That's it. If, if you've done that already, then you can understand what I'm saying. You can go, hey, yeah, man, that's terrific. You got her. And if you haven't, well, keep looking. Keep looking for God. Because God is looking for you. Well, think about it. If you have a need or a concern, let us know. We'll do whatever we can, as fast as we can, to help meet your need. Thank you so much for listening today and this week. And I'll be by next week with a couple of other ideas. Take care of yourself. Have a great weekend. And I'll talk to you later.